Welcome to this season where I'm going to talk about how to hear God's voice. And this is part of a series I'm doing called How To. The first I talk about how to set people free. The next how to heal the sick. And this time how to hear God's voice. And it's a very practical series. It's not deep, deep doctrines I'm going into, but I'm giving you practical advice. This time, how to hear God's voice. And we are going to look at how God speaks to us. We are going to look at how we hear. And we are going to share, I'm going to share some testimonies how God has been speaking to me. So you can also be aware that God can speak to you in the same manner. So how do how to hear God's voice. This is what we're going to talk about today. First thing I want to say is that Revelation, in the book of Revelation, Jesus said one thing to the seven churches. He said to all seven churches, those who have ears, hear or listen to what the Spirit is saying. Those who have ears, listen to what the Spirit is saying. He's not talking about those ears because... How many times have you met people who don't have ears? We all have ears, two of them. But just because you have ears don't mean that you can actually listen to what God is saying. Because very often he don't speak through those ears, but he speaks through some other ears. He speaks to our spirit. So if you're only waiting for God to speak to those ears, you are going to miss out of what he's saying. It's not enough to have ears to hear what God is saying. You need to have ears here. You need to listen by the Spirit. And I want to say for you and me to really have that relationship with God, we need to be born again. And many Christians don't feel God speak to them. And the reason is that they are Christians. They are not truly born again. I, be, I remember before I got born again, I prayed to God. There was times I really shouted out and cried out to God and prayed. And I did not feel he was there. It was like praying into a ceiling. There was like no relationship. But this is what Isaiah 59 is saying. That because of our sins, God hide his face and he cannot hear us. But what I experienced was when I became born again, when I got became like experienced forgiveness for my sins that wall that ceiling i felt that was between me and god disappeared so god he came and he became a, a real part of my life and i experienced again and again how god actually was present and he could speak to me so if you have ever, never ever experienced god has sp spoken to you there is a big change you're not born again and you need to be fully born again. You need to repent, turn away from your sins, be baptized into Christ and receive the Holy Spirit for you to come in and live this life. Read about in the book of Acts, the life read about in the Bible, the life I am going to tell about here. But how do God speak to us? He can speak to us through our audible voice. But I write here, not often. Because it's not often God speak through an audible voice. If you look at the Gospels, the four Gospels, God only spoke three times in an audible voice. First time was, if you remember, when Jesus got baptized. Second time was on the Mount of Trifiguration. Difficult words to say for a Danish guy. But where Jesus revealed himself. And third time was when Jesus got crucified. Those three times you see God spoke from heaven with an audible voice, so everyone around them heard it. I know people who have heard God speak with an audible voice. I have never experienced that this day today. It don't mean that God don't speak. It don't mean that the Holy Spirit don't lead. It don't mean that I, I don't get dreams and vision and many other things are happening. But I have never this day today walking with God for 25 years or many years, 26 years, something like that. I've never heard God spoke to me with an audible voice. So if you are waiting and waiting and waiting and only think God can only speak this way, you're going to miss out of an uh, amazing relationship with God. You're going to miss out of so many things because God can speak in so many ways. The audible voice can be one of it, but it's not often that is happening. 
when we often he speak by his spirit. God speak by his spirit through our inner ear, <laughs> through our spirit. And I wrote here God's small or still small voice. And, and the way it happens is God speak to our spirit. I can put it there. With a light up small inner voice. It's the way I describe it is very often like, it's not like I hear it from outside, but it's like suddenly, whoa, like somebody have just told me something without I heard the voice tell me it. But in that moment that voice is finished, somebody is finished speaking, I know it because I just heard it. Do that make sense? It's almost like I don't hear God speaks. It's almost like he put it in me. But it can seem so real and it can seem like, whoa, God spoke. I example years ago, I was uh, sitting on a computer and, and writing something. And it was one of the clearest time I heard, ever heard God speak. I heard God said, Torben, write a book. And, and it was almost like it came from here. And I was like, what? What God, write a book? You, I, I'm not good at school. I've never written a book in my whole life. How can I write a book? And God said to me, like, I give you one chapter each day, so no, you should not write. <laughs> and, and it was a very, very clear experience I got there. God spoke. And I was like, wow. I went out to my wife. God, God has just spoken to me. Like, I was so amazed. And experience like this, it became a book I wrote called The Sound Doctrine. I had like two weeks where the Holy Spirit was there in a special way. And I wrote the first book I ever written called The Sound Doctrine. When I was finished with that book, there was one more time God spoke and he said, Top, wait, we publish the book until I say now. From now on, I'm going to confirm this word in your life. And then it went three years before God spoke about this again. So I have experienced God spoke and have been speaking to me. But sometimes that can go weeks, sometimes that can go months. I've actually experienced that going many months since God has spoken to me. So it's not like I, I go and hear voices every day like that in my innermost being. Sometimes it's a few times a year where I experience like, whoa. Oh, God spoke. But when God speaks like this, it's like, yes, sir, this is what I'm doing. And it really have a unique impact on my life. It really changed my life. So, and this first time there, it became a book called The Sound Doctrine. Another time, I remember some years ago, not going into details, I was sitting in Denmark. And, and I stood at a place where I really needed some money. I, we, we did not have enough to pay for the sender. And I really, we got some bills coming up. And I was praying and I was crying out to God. And I was fasting at the same time. And I was saying, God, I need you. God, I need you. I need a miracle. And there it was like he spoke again. He said, Torben, have I ever called you to do something that don't take a miracle? And I was like, what? No, oh. no, oh, you haven't. Whoa, no, you haven't. You have never called me to do something that don't take America. You want me to live this life being dependent on you. And, and that small word again into my spirit had a big, big impact on my life. And it, it created faith in me. And, and it's something that changed my life and it changed the outcome of what we were doing. So God, he can speak. Not with our audible voice it can be but there with a still voice but still don't mean that it's like mm, it mean like oh god, god just just spoke to me just god just, god just spoke me to me of course that voice can be higher and deeper and so on sometimes it's like mm, i'm not sure i think maybe it was god other times like whoa god have just spoken to me and, and the, the times in my life, 25 years of walking with God, where I said like, whoa, God has spoken to me. Like, whoa, have maybe been, I don't know, 15 times around there, I would say. The times where he has spoken with me, like, mm, I'm not sure, I, I, I feel God said this and this, have been hundreds of times, have been many times. So God can speak to our spirit. 
Another way God can speak to you and speak to me, of course, is by his word. Read and listen. Read and listen. And I want to say that time when, when God spoke to me about writing a book called The Sound Doctrine, there God really spoke to me after he spoke like this, he spoke to his word. And I remember I was sitting and studying Romans 6 and, and I came down. It's like the Holy Spirit was really making the word alive and how God was speaking. And when I came to verse 14, 6, 14, sin had no dominion over you because you're not under law, under grace. When I read those words, it just became like, like God spoke to me, like Torben, sin have no dominion over you, Torben. You're free. You're not under law anymore. You're under grace. When I read those words, it was not just words, words. It was God who spoke through those words into my spirit. And I was like, then I'm free. Whoa. And I stood up in my office. I was running around and I was like, whoa. And it changed my life forever. It was one of the strongest experiences I've ever had with God. That was in my office where God spoke to me by his words. I, I've been re I read the word before many times, but before it was more like I read it and I understood it. I listened, I understood it with my head. But when God spoke through the word and came to my spirit, it just changed everything. And I want to say some of the strongest experiences I ever had with God have been through his word. Where I read the word like, it's me. This is me. I'm, I'm reading about me in the word. Or, or, or this is, whoa, this is what God wants me to do. He, this is what I've been seeking an answer and I read the word and here it is. So God can also speak through his word. L read it and listen. Pray when you read the word and say, God, what are you saying to me today? Not just read it, but pray and say, God, what are you saying to me today? And then read the word and get the word in. But it's not only like this, this still voice he's speaking. is not only through his words he's speaking. He also speaks through visions. And we read that in the um, in, uh, book of Acts when the Holy Spirit came over Peter and the first apostle. They talk about the end times, how the spirit will be poured out on all flesh. And there they talked about that we, young and old people, shall see visions and have dreams and prophesy and many other things. So by the Spirit, God wants to speak to us through vision, dreams, and prophecies. Through visions. There I wrote awake. Because when you have a vision, you are not, you are awake. Uh, if, it's, if you're sleeping, I would call it a dream. So you are awake here and God, he can speak through a vision. One of the strongest vision I had um, years ago, I remember I was going to have a meeting. I was home and I was praying. And while I was praying at home and Sheila Bada, they're praying in tongues and praying. Suddenly I, I saw things in front of me. My eyes was open, but it was like I saw somebody standing in front of me. They had a problem with the shoulder. And, and even our home alone praying, I was like, okay, I pray for the shoulder. And I put my hand out like there was a man in the name of Jesus be healed. I, didn't, I don't think I said something. I just put my hands on and he was, whoa, and that person was healed. And I was like, whoa. And then I heard something in the vision behind me and I turned around and I knew, I saw in the vision that I said a woman behind me, problem with the ears. And I took my hand and put them on the ears and I removed and whoa, that person got healed. And then I was like, whoa, what was that? Like what happened there? Then I went to the meeting just one hour later. I was in, it was in a school. I did a meeting. I asked anyone is sick, anyone need prayer. And a man sat down and he said, yeah, problem with my shoulder, come up. And he stood up, what shoulder is it? And, and he said, the, the left shoulder. Okay, in that second, I put my hand on his shoulder. It was like, that was, this was what I did one hour ago in a vision. One hour ago in a vision, I did exactly this. I put my hand on the shoulder and I don't remember what I prayed. I was just like, wow. 
And when I removed my hand, he was like, whoa, I am healed. And I was just like, I've seen this just one hour ago. And then I heard behind me, somebody said, hey, can God also heal the ear? And I turned around and there sat a person behind me with problem of, of ringing on the ear. And I put my hand on the ear. But at that moment, I was just like, I'm, I saw this one hour ago in a vision. And I put my hand on the ear and then I removed my ear and everyone was quiet and she was healed and the whole classroom erupted and people were so amazed. And I was like, whoa. So it was a strong vision I had while I was praying with my eyes open. I saw it happened before it happened. And, and I've seen other experiences, not so strong, so details, but I've seen things again and again where God showed me things in a vision where it suddenly come and I see things and I know what is going to happen or what I need to do. So God, he can speak by the spirit. God can speak by his word with audible voice. Also, God can speak by vision and God can speak by dreams. And that is where we are asleep. And uh, when talking about dreams, a strong example that I remember years ago, we were going to have a meeting and that night I got a dream, a, a very, very clear dream. In the dream, our daughter, she was small at that time, Simone, she came to me and she had almost like, looked like evil, demonic eyes almost like, or evil eyes. The eyes was white all over, like, like white and it was just so weird that eyes and it looked so evil. And then there was a big lion and that big lion was ready to eat the head of my daughter. And I saw that in a dream, but then I had a sword in my hand. And right away I took the sword and from down or up I cut the head of the lion and it fell down. And I woke up and I, what was that? What was that? And then my wife was awake and said, I need to talk to you. Yeah, me too, like, I just got a dream. And she said, something happened with Simone this night. What? I woke up this night, I heard a noise. She was very small at that time. I heard a noise in the kitchen. I went out in the kitchen and there our daughter Simone had taken a scissor and was standing with the eye. Why? Because she had just got an infection the same night in her eye. So there was a lot of white in her eye with her eye and she could not open her eye because of, because of the, the infection, the thing there. And she took a scissor and, and was ready to try to cut it off. But my wife heard a noise and came into the kitchen and stopped her. And I was like, what? And then Simone, she came and I saw her. And I recognized those eyes right away. What, what is happening here? Like it was a big, big attack of us as a family. And I felt it as a spiritual attack and we needed to go on a mission trip that, that morning. It was just the day before. So, so I went out praying and said, God, what is happening? Oh, I need to go to the drugstore. That was my first thought. I, sh should I go to a drugstore and get something for her eye? But I don't have time. We need to go on a mission trip and, and what shall we do? And, 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 and what about the dream, God? And then, then suddenly I recognized the lion in the dream. <laughs> because our drugstore, the local drugstore we had in that city at that time called, was called Lion, lion Drugstore. And outside our drugstore, there sat a big lion. And that big lion outside the drugstore was the lion I saw in the dream that tried to eat our daughter. And when I saw that, I remember, suddenly I had the word of God, the sword. And I remember, no, I'm not going to take the drugstore. I'm going to cut the head of the lion. And instead, I'm going to believe and fight with the word of God. And God is going to heal our daughter. And we did that. We dropped the drops. Uh, we did not go to the drugstore because of that dream. And we prayed in faith and God healed our daughter. And we went on our mission trip. So it was an attack against us as a family. And it happened a dream, a dream. Uh, another example, very short, another dream. Uh, I'm in California now while I'm filming this. We are doing a road trip across America. 
Last time I was in California, or a few times ago, I was in California, in Sacramento. I had a dream in the night during the Kickstarter weekend. I had a dream that, in the dream, I dreamt that um, I was preaching the gospel, but a man stood up and tried to interrupt. And when he stood up in the spirit, I just felt confused and people did not listen to me anymore. And I saw that man in the dream. He was not so tall. He had red hair, a big beard, uh, not so tall, but a big guy. And I did not see it close. I just saw his figure. And I saw him in the dream and I woke up. And I said to the people I was staying with who was helping organize the, the kickstart, I said, today there's going to come somebody who's going to interrupt the meeting. I saw him in a dream this night. He had red beard and red hair, red beard, not so tall, big guy. And if you see that man, be ready. He are not allowed to interrupt our meeting. And I said it to those people I'm staying with, and there was also in charge of the, the meeting and uh, some security there. What happened was that guy in my dream, he come to the meeting that day. And as soon as our people there saw him, hey, we have the guy in the dream. <laughs> and they came there like, this is the guy in the dream. So they sat around him. So in the middle of my prison, when he stood up and wanted to interrupt, they stood up beside him and you sit down again. And it did not interrupt the meeting. I have a picture of him here. You can see here, he, he, had, he was actually a guy. You can see he was dressed up. He had his own religion and he was just there to interrupt the meeting. But God had given me a dream the day before revealing to me what was going to happen so that we are prepared for what it is. So God wants to speak to us, to his, to his people, through dreams and visions. Another way God is speaking is through prophecies, through prophecies. And I write always test it and we need to test all of it, of course. But especially prophecies that's coming from other people, test it, test it, test it. I've seen so many people fall away because they are chasing a prophecy in blind, a, blind, a prophecy in blindness. They get a word and they believe it's God. I have got many, many, many prophecies, but I would say 90% of those prophecies I've got, God, I've just demissed right away. It needs to be confirmed in your spirit. You need to feel like, yes, this is from God, and you need to test it. Some times I get a word, I feel God is saying it. I write it down, but I'm waiting and watching and seeing if, if, if it comes true. Other times, like, whoa, this is really God speaking. And prophecies is a big part of being a Christian. And many of the things we do, it's because of words. God has spoken to us through prophetic words. And they have been a confirmation of things God had already been speaking to me as a spirit, in my spirit. So it, it just confirmed what you somehow already know. In 2002, 3 and 4, for example, I got three prophecies, or three of the same prophecy in three different countries by three different people. And the same prophecy, same uh, Three different people in three different countries. And the word was that I should lay a DNA down in a new generation. And this DNA should go from generation to generation. And we, or they, those people should see homes and cities come to faith. It was before the pioneer school. And now we have done the pioneer school. We are laying a DNA down in new generation. And we see how we go from generation to generation to generation. And we see homes come to faith and not cities yet but i believe that will come so most of what i'm doing it has been a a word god has spoken to me so and there's new things we are going to do now the next few months i'll share that later but that is also because god spoke but that was to my wife first and a confirmation i got later and so on and so on so god is speaking through prophecies but you need to test it you need to test it always. God, he can speak to many other ways also. That is just some of the ways, audible voice, by his spirit, by his word, by visions, by dreams, by prophecies. But God, he can speak to a word of knowledge. That is suddenly you get a, a word, you know things. Like you go into a room and like you are pain in the back. You are pain in the back. How do you know that? You have just lost somebody in your family and you have a lot of hurt. 
or you go to a divorce. How did you know that? That is word of knowledge where we suddenly know something we would not have known. God gave us a word of knowledge. He also a word of wisdom where God gave us wisdom, supernatural wisdom for I just know it. This is how it is and this is how we should do it because it will work out like this and this. God give us supernatural faith and can speak through this. God can speak to a donkey. Yeah. We have examined in the Bible. We know that God spoke to a donkey. So I would say don't limit God. So if you go and look at this at, at Numbers 22 with Balaam, where the donkey spoke, but it was not a donkey who spoke. It was the angel of the Lord who spoke through the donkey. So God, he can speak through a donkey and God, he can speak to a newborn believer. God can actually speak to us through a sinner. God, he can speak to us through many people. So don't limit God. Don't limit God's way of speaking to you. And I, I, I want to say in, in my life, what I'm most, most excited about in this walk with God is how the Holy Spirit is leading how we are walking in things God beforehand had prepared for us to walk in. That is what I'm most excited about, how, how things just fall in place. And God, he leads. Like the other day, I did a video with, with a, somebody I met at Chick-fil-A, where I ended up baptizing the whole household. But God, he used the mechanic to, to, uh, <laughs> to not let us drive too early. So we came to the right moment at the right spot so that family was ready to be born again and get a new life. So I want to say like this, God, he can speak to many things. Don't limit God. How do we come in and live this life where we experience the Holy Spirit's leading, where we experience God is speaking, where we experience dream and vision and prophecies and, and the word become alive? Seek him. Seek him. This is what, what we need to do. Be in his word. Seek him. Be in his word. Be quiet and listen. And I would say especially this, throw the TV out if you can. Don't listen too much to worship even. Listen to worship. God can speak through worship. But have time where you don't listen to music and worship and our radio and TV all the time. Why? Because you have too many voices in your head. Be quiet. Go for a walk. Go and talk with God and then just be quiet. See God. And for me, it's not so often I go into a room and close the door and say, God, I need an answer right now. And God, give me the answer. It's not so often it happened with me. But I go into a room and I pray and I go out and I keep praying and keep praying and keep seeking. And suddenly God is speaking. Not always in that moment I want him to speak. But do, over time, God is speaking. So seek him. Be in his word. Read and listen to the word. And when I say listen, let the word go also like uh, audio Bible is good. Be quiet also and listen. Let your mind be renewed. And that is a big, big part of it. Let your mind be renewed. Romans 12 are talking about this, that we should not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but we should be transformed in our mind transformed by the renewing of the mind so we may know so so it's through the transformation to the renewing of the mind that we can know what god's will is and that happened also in the word that we are in the word that we let our mind to be on god and godly things and then it's so much easier to hear god's voice in all of this i want to say of course again i've said it before always Tested, 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 tested. And I wrote two or three witnesses. Why? Because 2 Corinthians 13, Paul is saying that when, when there's a false accusation against somebody, we need two or three witnesses to be able to establish this case. But it's not only against false accusation. There is something with two and three witnesses in the Bible that we need to test things. We need scripture. I have to be more than one place in the Bible. We need two and three witnesses to really know that this is from God. And, and I will also say when, when God speaks, have two and three witnesses. When, when we do big things for God, very often he speaks to me and then there's other people he speaks to. So if you hear something from God and you are part of the body of Christ, the church, the real body of Christ, 
have people around you who love Jesus and you hear something and everyone around you hears something completely else. Listen. And I want to say that when I said at church, there is persecution and persecution often come here from the religious system. But it's, it's not everything that's persecution. There is also things that is protection. And that don't come from the religious system, but they come from the true body of Christ of believers. And I've sadly seen many young people who, for example, go out and get married right away without, without really thinking of it because they got a prophecy. And because somebody else was giving a word and they interpret the word like this and the prophecy like this. And yes, God has spoken to me or they go through the word and read something and yes. And, and, and then they get a dream. Yes, this is God. But, but everyone around them of the true body of believers are concerned because it go against the fullness of the word of God. It don't make sense. You don't go out and marry right away without your parents and family know about it. You don't just go to bed with each other and say you're married. And, and what I see there is that sadly, 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 so many, 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 many people are being deceived because of false vision and dreams. They are being deceived because of false prophecies. They're being deceived because it's not truly God who speaks, it's their own desire and their own lust. And that's why we need each other. That's why we are part of the body. Newborn believer, younger people in the faith need older, mature people around them that can help test the word, test the dream, test the prophecy, test the vision, test Test, test. And I therefore want to say again, it's not, be careful when godly people around you say, hey, I, I really feel bad with this. This is not God because God is always saying this and this and this. Be careful and just t don't take it as persecution. Oh, it's persecution. I experience persecution. No, persecution comes from the religious system, but protection comes from the body of Christ. And I would say in all of this, we need a lot of discernment, a lot of discernment. It's not every dream that is from God. Satan can also get dreams and it can also just be your flesh. It's not every way you interpret the word that is from God because Satan also know the word. That was how he tempted Jesus, but he took the word out of context. There can be false prophecies. There can be false prophets. So test things. Don't test it, test it, test it, but don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. We are called to live a strong life, to walk by the Spirit, to know God. And so I want to end up, I know it's already a long video, but I hope this is going to be a blessing to you. I'm just going to very short Put it all together. You who love Jesus, you who are born again. If you are his sheep, hear his voice. If you belong to him, God is speaking to you. He's speaking to all of his children. He is speaking, but you need to listen. You need to have ears to hear what he's saying. You need to take the time to listen. If you're not born again, of course, you need to be born again. But you are born again. Take the time to listen. In your everyday life, pray, see God, but also be quiet and listen. When you are quiet, say, Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me? And when you hear that small whisper, when you suddenly get a thought, oh, is it you, God, or is it just me? And sometimes you need to try it and test it. For example, if you get a thought, if somebody have pain in the back, you can ask, hey, excuse me, do you have pain in the back? Okay. If you get a thought, like crazy thought, don't test it like that. Then pray for more confirmation for other people. God speaks through his word. God speaks through vision. God speaks through dreams. God speaks through prophecies. God speaks many ways. And if you are aware, aware of all of those different ways God is speaking, and you, if you are seeking God in prayer and fasting and other things, I guarantee you, you experience an amazing, beautiful life where God is speaking. And by time, it becomes easier and easier and easier and easier and easier to discern when is your own thought, 
when it's our enemy or when it is God who are speaking to us. It become easier by time, but in the beginning it's difficult. So that's why you need some mature people around you who can help you to test it. But by time when you grow up to maturity, it's so much easier to know God's voice and it's a beautiful, beautiful life. God bless you all out there. Take time and ask God when you go to bed, God, give me a dream. Ask God when you wake up, God, speak to me this day. Ask God when you're in your prayer life, God, speak to me and be quiet and listen and expect, believe, expect that he will speak to you, that he will guide you and uh, you experience an amazing life. God bless you. See the other videos in this series how to and uh, if there's other things you want me to speak about how to do things or anything then you can write in the comments god bless you all bye bye